Hey, welcome to KCC Online. This is actually, possibly, hopefully, the last time that I have to film a message in an empty sanctuary. Uh, we hope to open up next week, uh, but you know, everything's still fluid. Um, our uh, great state of Indiana just took a pause on their reopen, so we'll see what that has to do for us. But you know, everything's in limbo. Uh, what's going on around us is in limbo. But one thing that, uh, as a tradition here, is that this is VBS week. And but again, VBS this week looks different. It's virtual, like this. Um, we're doing it online. But you know what? I know at least Gabe, my son, and I, we're doing it together, and he actually, he, he really is loving it because it's just he and I doing it. We're having some fun, some dad and son time, and so we're enjoying it, but it's different. We're missing community. We're missing connection, and that's why I'm looking forward to regathering together as a church family, uh, hopefully, like I said, next week. But uh, again, stay tuned, if, but we'll continue. Even after we reopen, we will be putting out online content. We'll still be doing events on, on uh, Facebook. They'll just be different. Um, we're still going to have, we'll have Sunday mornings now where we'll be able to stream it online. And so again, we're still, the church is never closed. But baby, we're ready to reopen, aren't we? So this week uh, is VBS week, and I think it's so cool how God weaves things together because VBS is called Focus, and their focus is on Jesus, teaching our kids to focus on Jesus, which was last week's message. And I had no idea that that was what uh, VBS was going to be about. Nor did I know that their key verses were going to be Hebrews 12, which is what our church has been going through in our morning devotions. We just finished them up. And then guess what? I'm preaching today from Hebrews 12. It all has weaved together. But in our sermon series, uh, How Are You? Uh, we're actually kind of, this is like a, a pause. We're just past halfway through. This is week five. And I want to make sure that we are putting some stuff into practice. And so today, as we've been doing the sermon, I've, I've kind of talked about, hey, how are you? And then we come back with the answer, it's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay there. And so today, we're actually going to address that part of it, the, the staying there. And maybe if I was to say, and I, I've actually been there before myself, if someone was to say, how are you? I would say, man, I feel stuck. I just feel like nothing's moving. My life is at pause. And so if you're feeling stuck today, this is your sermon. But it's also for everyone, because I believe um, as we've went through some things, we've kind of touched on some topics, but I haven't gone deep into them. So this week, we're going to go deeper into Scripture and, and hopefully bring out some lessons, some practical things that we can do throughout our weeks to grow in our relationship with Jesus. Last week, we talked about, you know, we need to take courage and we need to take action. Well, this week, we're going to look at some specific ways to do that. And maybe you're afraid to take action. Um, so what do you do with that? Well, you know what? Even a baby step in the right direction is a good first step. It doesn't need to be a big step. We have to learn to crawl before we can walk, and we have to learn how to walk before we can run. And so we just need to get going. And if that, again, if you feel stuck, then you need to get moving. But again, how? What do we do? And I just think sometimes we just got to go. We just have to choose to start going. One of my favorite uh, quotes is from Winston Churchill, and he said that when you're going through hell, don't stop. And I'm afraid that some of us, we've stopped. We've, we've stopped, and we haven't grown physically, we haven't grown emotionally, we haven't grown spiritually, maybe in years. Some people have never picked up a book since they graduated from high school. And so, if we just do the same thing every day that we did the day before, we're not growing in any area of our life. So we have to get moving. But the question then becomes, well, how do we know if we're headed in the right direction? Simple answer, and you're probably rolling your eyes already because you know what I'm going to say. The Bible. 
In fact, uh, you know, and I know that it can be challenging. I know it can be challenging to figure out, am I really going in the right direction? But, you know, um, who, who are you trusting to lead you down the path? You know, if we're supposed to get moving, who do we follow? Jesus. Where do we learn how? The Bible. See where, how it just keeps coming back around to Jesus and Scripture? See, are, are we trusting in the action of our own work, or are we trusting in the one who gave us the work to do? Are we trusting in our own courage, or are we trusting in the, uh, the one who gives us the courage? See, that makes a big difference. Um, and I'm not merely talking about taking action to stop that voice in your head that's telling you that you're not good enough. And this is a very clear thing, and I, and I, or an important thing, and I want to make sure that we're clear on this. When we start talking about works, when we start talking about taking action, in no way ever, ever am I talking about earning salvation. I am merely talking about working through our salvation. I'm talking about um, not trying to earn God's love, but loving people because of God's love. See, there's a huge difference. We are never, I will never be good enough for heaven. You will never be good enough for heaven. But because of Jesus, we have been made good enough for heaven. Now, what do we do with this great gift? Well, we share it with others. We, we grow in our, in, our, in our spiritual disciplines. We, we grow in our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. That's what we do. That's what we give our life back to Jesus because you know what? Most of us, we've messed up our lives anyway. And so he can do something way better with them if we would just trust him. Take action. Don't be afraid. So, you know, even actually VBS, uh, just in the question that came out yesterday um, and during our VBS video, it said, uh, how exactly was it phrased? Um, what is God telling you to do? Well, I don't know. What is God telling you to do? How do we know? We look to scripture. He doesn't really hide things from us. He makes it very clear. We, we just need to be spending more time with him and in his word, and he will clearly speak to us. And some of you are going, I, I don't believe that. I've never heard God speak. Well, that's funny, because if you open up his word, he is speaking all the time. And again, these spiritual disciplines, I've been trying to tell you all for weeks, months, that it, there's nothing special about them it is about spending time in his presence. And so I, I guess I, I want you to know something this morning before we get started. My notes are fairly empty. My heart is full. I am actually just talking to you like a friend. And maybe I'm speaking out of my pastor's heart. I don't know. What I do know is, is that this is... This is my passion, spiritual disciplines, helping people take their next step in, um, in their walk with Jesus is the thing that I've always loved about ministry. It's what I've always wanted to do. In fact, I believe it's my area of giftedness. Uh, this speaking, preaching uh, is not my area of giftedness. I, I never actually thought I would be a preacher. I thought I'd be a pastor on staff. I would be a discipleship minister. I'd be helping people walk along one-on-one -on -one in their journey with Jesus. Doing this preaching thing is not my gift. And some of you are like, duh, told you that a long time. No, anyway, so this is my passion. This is what I love doing. And so if I get a little excited, it's because this is my, my thing. I love helping people take their next step with Jesus. And so if you are feeling like you are physically, emotionally, or spiritually stuck, now is the time to help yourself get unstuck. I can help you. But again, I can't make you become unstuck. It is a choice you have to decide when you look at your life as it is today, I'm not living like Jesus would want me to live. So then you have to figure out, what am I going to do? Well, likely you're gonna to have to make some changes in your daily routine. Um, we can't move, 
We can't take action and stay at the same place at the same time. Those things literally don't make sense. And I know you can grasp that with your mind, but you know, we, we have voices going on in our heads all the time, voices in our hearts saying, well, you should do this. Yeah, I wanna do that. I wanna lose weight. I wanna read my Bible. I wanna get up early. And then when early comes, you have that other voice saying, wow, this bed's really comfortable. These blankets are really cozy. I'll start tomorrow. If you wanna move, if you wanna take action, if you wanna take courage, you have to become very self-aware. You have to uh, get, gain some knowledge. You have to be willing to make a change. And then you have to prepare to do it. And then ultimately, you just have to do it. You have to take that first step. Um, so here we go. We're going to be in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and three, one through 3. And again, these are the same verses that the kids have been using all week for uh, VBS. So it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So, okay, and this is, I know it's, this is kind of cheesy. It's cliche. You've probably heard it before. But going back to the very first verse, the very first set word, it says, therefore. You have to know what that's there for. So turn the page back to Hebrews 11. And Hebrews 11 is a huge chapter. In fact, I would encourage you, literally right now, if you haven't, to pause this video, read through it, because I'm just gonna blow through it really quickly, but you really should read the stories of the people in Hebrews 11, which is called the, the Heroes of Faith chapter. So take a moment, I'll wait. All right, so what did you think? Pretty cool, huh? I want us to look at a few verses. Like I said, I'm going to blow through it really quick. But it, verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about we do not see. Guess what? We've never seen Jesus, but we believe in him. That's who our faith is in. Some of these people did, but most of them did not. Um, but I want us to understand, last week we talked a lot about taking action and taking courage. Faith is action. Love is action. Words aren't good enough. Listen to what these people did, all right? Uh, verse four, Abel brought God a better offering. He brought an offering. Go on down. Uh, it talks about how Enoch in verse six, and it said, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, that's kind of important to know, isn't it? We have to have faith to even please God. God? Well, let's look at Noah, verse 7. Uh, we talked about fear last week, and we, you know, fear and faith don't go together, but it says in verse 7 that Noah had holy fear. Holy fear. I, I didn't even know that verse, um, but he built an ark. His action was building the ark. He didn't talk about it. He did it. He picked up hammers, and he built an ark. It says, verse um, 8, by faith, Abraham, when called to go, he went. He left his home. He left his family. To go down to verse 13. Um, if they had been thinking of, he's talking about the exiles. If, if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. They were forward thinking. They weren't looking at the past. Too many of us are looking backwards thinking, well, maybe I should go back to the couch. No, we're going forward because God, Jesus, has a better plan, a better place for us to go. Verse 17, by Abraham, he offered up Isaac on the, on the he was going to sacrifice him. He, that was an action. 
by faith. Moses' parents, they hid him for three months. Verse 24, by faith, Moses refused to be known as the Pharaoh's son. And so he gave up all the pleasures. He chose, it says, to be mistreated. By faith, he left Egypt. That's in action. Verse 29, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea. They didn't stand there. They walked through. It says by faith, uh, in verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. Can you imagine how crazy that had to feel to walk around it? But they did it. They were obedient. Then get down to verse 34, and he starts talking about, through faith, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weaknesses were turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refused to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. <laughs> they were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were the heroes of faith. And we look around it and we wonder why we're so bored and why everything doesn't, you know, I, we struggle in our faith. It's because we are not living this way. We are not taking action. We are, we are saying we believe things, but our actions contradict what we say we believe. Belief, faith, is an action. We have to take action. We have to do some things differently. So, I guess you could even say, like with last week's sermon, these are people who got out of the boat, like Peter. They were not just, uh, they were not just sitting on the couch watching the people in the arena. They were not just watching TV. They were actively involved in the world around them because they were obeying the will and the word and the ways of God. They set an example for us. See, that's, that's why those verses were there for. It's so we could see an example. They are our witnesses. And that doesn't mean the word witnesses there in the Greek is not like they're watching us. They're in heaven watching us. I know that's what some people think. That's not what it means. It means that they are the witnesses. They're testifying like in a court. They're testifying through their lives all that God is capable of doing. And they did that by faith. See, we can read their stories. We can read through, just turn to the New Testament if you want, and read through all the things that happened and how Jesus was always there. That's what we can believe in. That's what we can take trust in. That's why we can take courage, see. For me, my faith, um, I, I just believe things are going to work out. I don't know how. I don't even want to know how. I just believe it's always going to work out. In fact, I heard it said this way. In the end, it's going to work out. If it's not working out, it's not the end. See, that is faith. Now, we can look to others. That's what that whole chapter is about, looking to others. That's why we look to their witness. But you know what? We can also look to others in today's society. You can get a mentor. I talk a lot about John Taylor as my mentor. I've had other mentors. In fact, you know what? I have a lot of mentors who they're not even alive anymore. Uh, A.W. Tozer, uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer, C.S. Lewis. These are people that I look and I read to. The Desert Fathers from, from the 300s and 500s and, and the things that they did. St. Francis, he's, a, he's a, a mentor of mine. As I read his works and how he lived his life. Uh, we can look to modern people like uh, I look to Francis Chan. I look to Bob Goff. I look to uh, Craig Rochelle. 
just Kyle Eidelman, all these pastors who, who are great writers and they show us how to live a Christian life in today's culture. But I have, what about other areas? I mean, I look to people like Joe DeSena who started Spartan Race. I look at David Goggins and other SEALs and how they work out and train and how they become more than we think is possible. So we find mentors. We've, you can find one anywhere. You can look to other people. You can be inspired by their stories. Sometimes they're difficult stories. Sometimes they're people that you know who um, they've overcome tremendous obstacles through faith. I had to do a funeral this week for a young man who lived 10 years beyond when the doctors um, thought he would. And, you know, he's inspiring to me. So we can look to others to inspire us, that we can take faith, that we can live like they do. But then we have to take a look at ourselves. It says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Are we running the race We need to be very self-aware. We need to do a self-evaluation. Where are we right now today in our relationship with Jesus? For four weeks in this sermon series, I've been encouraging you to take some time in solitude and silence with your Bible and your journal and shut the world off. Have you done it? If you haven't, can I ask why? Is it because you're actually afraid to find out what's going on in your heart or in your head? Or is Jesus not important enough that you want to set aside some time to be alone with him? Those are very legitimate questions, and I'm sorry if your toes hurt. But someone needs to ask these questions if you're not willing to ask them of yourself. You know, we all have some sins we need to get rid of. We have some, some, it was, you know, the the concept here is that we have extra weight on us. Some of us have the COVID-19 and need to get rid of it. But we have some spiritual weight on us, some spiritual bondage that we need to get rid of. Right now, with the things going on in the world around us, I think some of us have been awoken, if you want to use that word, to some racial biases we, we're not racist, but we do have biases. We have things we don't know. We have things we didn't care to ever know. So you know what? Sit down. Ask yourself some questions. Are you closer to Jesus today than you were the day you were baptized? Or did you feel like that was the finish line? Does your family see Jesus in you on a daily basis? Are you growing in your awe and wonder of God, which is what brings us around to being able to truly and openly and faithfully worship? When's the last time that we, you spoke openly to someone about Jesus and your faith? Are you being obedient in the little things, or are you just letting some stuff hide? Is there anything in your life that you need to get rid of, as it said? What things are hindering your walk with Jesus? Are you honoring Jesus in how you dress? Are you honoring Jesus in your physical body? Are you honoring Jesus in how you use your money? See, these are questions, these are things that are hindering many of us in our race. Are we actively living out the purpose God created us for? Because we have been created on purpose for purpose. We're not accidents. So we can look at others. We look at ourselves. But most importantly, we focus on Jesus. It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus set the perfect example for us. Remember Peter last week? As long as he was looking at Jesus, he was walking on water. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he started looking at himself, or he started looking at his problems, he started to sink. 
So we have to focus on Jesus. And then we can take action because Jesus has called us to action. He's actually called us to get out of the boat. We can take courage because it's Jesus who gives us the courage to take. I cannot and I will not overemphasize. I think it's, I've, I hope you're getting this drilled into your head. We have to arrange our day around God's word and his will. We have to worship. We have to pray. These are all actions, faith in action. So, I mean, seriously, think about spending the day with Jesus. We begin our day with Jesus in the word and in prayer, journaling, silence, whatever you want to do. Find a Bible reading plan. Do the daily devotion that we're doing with the church. Just or open your, your Bible and just for yourself, read it and say, okay, what's my favorite verse out of what I just read and why? Um, maybe you can ask yourself some questions like, what did I learn about God in this passage? Um, how is God inviting me to grow in my faith in this passage? How is God calling me uh, to do an act of service with him in this passage. See, we're connecting and growing and serving with God by reading his word. And we have no excuses. None. No, none. No excuses. We have the written word everywhere. It's on our Bibles. It's in our Bibles. It's on our phones. You can use the U version. We have right now media that you can log into and watch amazing teachings. Uh, people who are actually gifted in the area of preaching and teaching. You know, throughout the day then, after you spend some morning time with him, then throughout the day, spend time just uh, pausing, set an alarm, reflect on Jesus, refocus your thoughts and your mind on Jesus. Take a moment to pray. You know, um, I carry a prayer stone around. And so when I reach into my pocket, it's a reminder that I need to be praying, that I need to focus on Jesus. Um, spend some time listening to worship songs. And then every night, it's not just a day thing, a morning thing. Every night, take a moment to review your day. In the tradition of the church, it's called the examine prayer. And there, here's my journal. I talk about journaling a lot. And so I, uh, I have this little note card. And on it, it's got some questions. And I ask myself, not every night, but most nights, um, I, I, I write some things down. Be grateful for God's blessings. What am I grateful for today? Review the day with openness and gratitude, looking for times when God has been present and times that I have ignored him. So I, I review my day. Pay attention to your emotions through the day and see where God is leading you through them. Express sorrow for sin and ask for God to forgive them. You know what? We sin every day. There's things that happen every day that we need, that we regret doing, actions we do that were wrong, uh, attitudes we had, things we didn't maybe even speak, but we thought them. We need, to, we need to express sorrow. We need to repent of all of those. And then my favorite part is accepting that grace for the day, knowing that I am loved, as I am, because you know what? It's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay there. So I accept that grace for, for the day. And then the last thing, before I go to sleep, I ask God for the grace to be more available for him tomorrow. And so see, it's an active thing that I do that, in hopes that I become a better Christian on a daily basis. Now, those are very practical things, things that we can do. And so, again, one of my mentors, who has long passed away by the name of A.W. Tozer, he wrote, complacency is easy, and it's a deadly foe of spiritual growth. So I'll tell you what, you don't have to listen to me, and you don't have to do anything different than you are. Nothing. But next week, and next month, and next year, and the next decade, you're going to be exactly where you are today, stuck, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. If you don't make some changes, you will be stuck where you are. And that's not what Jesus called us for. It's not what he called us to. 
Hebrews, we go a few more passages down to verse 11. It says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Make, um, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. So, you, again, you can stay where you are or you can be self-aware, start being willing to make some changes, get prepared to do it, and then choose to make a difference in your own life and the lives of people around you. You know, uh, you just have to, you have to start. You got to start somewhere, uh, whether it's just walking a little bit, um, crawling a little bit, you know, whatever it is that you need to do today to make tomorrow a little bit better, to get you unstuck. No one can make you unstuck but yourself. You know, Jesus said that his way is a, it's a narrow door or it's a narrow road. It's a narrow path. Few find it. It's not because they can't. It's because they won't. The choice is yours. Are you willing to get unstuck? Are you willing to choose to grow in your faith, to get a deeper relationship with Jesus, to become the person God created you to be? It all begins when you choose to follow Jesus and faithfully obey him. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, um, we all at some point, some point in our lives, we are stuck and we don't know which direction to go and we don't know how to get there. But Father, your word is a light upon the, uh, and it's a lamp and it shows us the way. Father, I, I pray if nothing else, people start cracking open their Bibles. They start opening up their, their phones in the mornings and, uh, and they look at your word before they look at this world and the craziness that's going around us, that they would look at Christ, that they would seek his will, his ways and his word. Um, Lord, help us, help us. That's my prayer. Father, that we would just be faithful and obedient, that we would take one step, because I believe, uh, as your word promises, that if we take a step, that you rush towards us. So Peter, when he started to sink, Jesus immediately reached out and rescued him. So Father, help us, lead us. May we follow you. May we be obedient to you. May we live our life with um, action and in faith and in love. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, whether I see you in person or online, I will see you next week, and I hope that you've taken a step in the right direction. See you next week.